Uh, former President Donald Trump suggested that former Vice President Mike Pence was responsible for the rioter's actions on January the 6th. Washington Post reports that Trump, while on a plane heading to Iowa, said, quote, uh, had Pence sent the votes back to the legislatures, they wouldn't have had a problem with January 6th. So in many ways, you can blame him for January the 6th, whatever. With us now, let's bring in political columnist for the New York Times, uh, or for the New York Magazine, Jonathan Che. Uh, his latest piece is titled The Republican Party May Not Be Fascist, but It's Definitely Getting Fashier. The left-wing case for downplaying authoritarianism is not convincing. So, Jonathan, Jonathan, you're, 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 yeah. uh, I love your columns. I read your columns. Uh, and uh, I usually agree with most most uh, of, of your columns. There's a butt your, coming. Your conclusions. Yeah, and uh, there is. Well, no, let's, let's be all DBT about this. At the same time, Jonathan, at the same yep. time, um, yeah. I found myself in a strange position where I'm usually the one that tells people mm -hmm. around here not to catastrophize, that the world's not coming to an end and locusts yep. aren't descending from the heavens. But you actually, in your article, sort of told me, through reading the article, don't don't catastrophize. This guy is not a fascist. Explain mm -hmm. why. Look, there's a lot of definitions of what a fascist is, and you can plunge into the academic literature and you'll get a thousand different meanings of what the term means. But I'm just trying to use the term the way I think most people use it. And I think the way most people understand the term fascist is a system where you can't oppose the ruling party without being arrested or killed. If there's active elections, active opposition, that's, it may be uh, an authoritarian style system, you may have something right. like Orban's Hungary, which is not a very liberal democracy, but that, that's not really a fascist system. And and I think right. you have to understand that these, these things are all on a continuum. It's not black and white democracy dictatorship. And I don't even think as dangerous as Trump and, and DeSantis are, they're not, they're not fascist. I don't think they want a system where we just don't have anything like a real election and you're just going to get shot for criticizing them. As dangerous as they are, that's, that's where I place right. them. Well, and, and again, I, I just because I don't, we don't know how DeSantis would would run things as president of the United States. We do know how Donald Trump would run things. Right. This is just a line I, yep. I want to drill down on a little bit here. You say neither Trump nor DeSantis sure. is trying to build a system like this. I would argue that's exactly what Donald Trump was trying to build, a system where, uh, I mean, again, not to personalize it, but it's a pretty good example. Uh, he didn't like how I was covering COVID, so he started talking about how I was a murderer and saying that I needed to be sent to jail and uh, for capital murder. Uh, he, of course, we could list other yep. people that he went after. He told his attorney general two weeks before the election, pressured him to arrest his political opponent who was ahead of him in the polls and arrest his family. Uh, we could go on and on. Yep. My, I guess my argument is that, and forgive me, I, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to sound condescending here because you're like a thousand times smarter than I Let am. Let me have it. I just, I, I Let me just have it. think no. you, sh okay, I think you show a lack of imagination here and I'm, I'm very serious. I think this is exactly what yeah. Donald Trump would do if he had a chance. He is trying to build this type of system and it was Madisonian democracy, it was checks and balances and it was federal judges of all ideological stripes. That, that was the yeah. only thing that stopped him from doing this. So I think, I don't think we really disagree about Trump. I think where we disagree is in the massive amount of space between what we what existed before Trump came along and a fascist country. Um, you can go very far down the road towards authoritarianism and still be stopping well short of fascism, um, a system that that you could describe as totalitarian. And the word totalitarian, you know, obviously involves the word total, right? Meaning the government right. and the ruling party infuses itself into every Every aspect of our life. There's absolutely no room for any kind of political or cultural thought that, ex that exists apart from the ideology of the ruling party. That's that's very very extreme, right? That's Stalin's uh, Soviet Union. That's Hitler's Germany. Um, I don't think that's 
where Trump has in mind. I think he has something, you know, more more like a kind of a Caudillo, more like an Orban estate or something maybe even closer to Putin's Russia, which I'm not sure qualifies all the way as, as fascist either, although it's getting it's getting pretty close. Um, so I, maybe I'm just making an academic point there, but I don't really think we disagree about Trump. Hey, Jonathan, it's uh, Jonathan Lemire. So let me ask you then, if yeah. the Republican Party is getting fascier, uh, what do you see any way yeah. where that trend is reversed? Right now, of course, Donald Trump is still the dominant figure in the party. We've been, we can talk about where how right. others have begun to emulate him. So certainly it seems like the party is heading down one yeah. particular path. How does it stop and go back the other way? That's a great question. I, I wish I had a, a good answer for you. Um, it does seem like there was a, a solid step in the midterm elections where you had some of the Republican candidates who were most associated with um, Trump's most authoritarian ideas, right, like Mastriano in Pennsylvania and Lake in Arizona. And they lost. And I think some of the other Republicans who had been inclined to support them and endorse them before then were saying, now, wait a second, this is costing us at the polls. Um, this is this is an electoral liability. We we're not going to be able to gain power in the first place if we put these people up for office. So I think if you can inflict a few more defeats like that on the party and punish these authoritarian moves, I think you might make the rest of the Republican Party feel like there's a really heavy cost to going down this road. And that's I mean, that's not a foolproof plan, but that's the best I can come up with.